Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger, and it's time for us to take a look at a Jinx build today. We're going to be playing her in the bottom lane, coming down here with Nami. We're against another Jinx because everybody's playing her. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and talk about her runes, masteries, items, just skills, everything. A little bit of everything in this build today. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with our level 1 purchase. We start with a Doran's Blade, kind of standard currently, but that's what we went with and uh, we're going to go ahead and just try to farm up a little bit early on as this game happens. Let's go ahead and talk about her abilities, though, so we know what we're talking about as this game progresses. First, we have her passive, which we'll talk about. It's called Get Excited. Whenever a champion or tower um, dies that Jinx has dealt damage to uh, within the last three seconds, she's going to gain a massive movement speed um, buff for four seconds. So, uh, well, it decays over four seconds. So that's your uh, Get Excited. It's nice when you pick up an assist or a kill on a tower or anything, and... Uh, you're going to run fast. It's also very helpful for chasing and securing other kills. So it's fun. You'll get excited about it. Hi-yo. Look what I just did there. Anyways, then there is your Q ability, which is called Switcheroo, which allows you to switch between your Q ability. Um, there's two different versions. When it's toggled off, it's your Pow Pow with the minigun. And uh, basically, it's going to grant you increased attack bonus, uh, attack speed. Speed. It stacks up to three times, maximizing this uh, percentage so you get more. Um, I actually do really like this as the game goes on. I actually typically see, team, uh, seem to max this out a little bit first um, early on in the game. I, I like it. I know some people have been maxing out W, which is her zap. Zap, you fire in a blast. If you hit them, it's going to deal a good amount of damage. Um, I might actually think that this would get touched in the future. It seems a little bit strong, but we'll see. Um, but that's going to deal some... Um, damage to them and it's going to slow them as well so uh, I typically try to put a point into this at either level one or level two I'll max this out second we're gonna max out my Q first is what I like to do and then at level three I put a point into her E ability which is her flame chompers and she uh, choss or she tosses out three of those chompers um, if somebody steps on one of them they are going to get rooted and uh, for a short duration so they automatically go off after five seconds but that's what you can do with those they can only step on one of them but if you throw them down in a team fight you can do that here we have vi coming in from the side gonna go ahead and just try to hit her real quick and actually hit her with the w which does kill her do a little bit of extra damage to the jinx and uh our nami's gonna die but that will happen because of the passive from zyra so we picked up a kill real quick and uh, we're going to actually stick around here. Vi's going to hang out with me because enemy Jinx is slightly low. And I do have my ultimate, which, as we have not covered, it's called Super Super Mega Death Rocket. I'm going to try to hit her with one of these if I can get or our Vi to alt her. So, um, actually, we're going to have Hoyt as Vi run up there now. He's going to charge in. Right now, he's actually alting her. I'm launching it, and I am going to kill her. So, um, just some good teamwork there. I was like, hey, if you just go alt her... I will just kill her. So that's what we did. So that was your super mega death rocket, which um, it gains speed as it travels. It explodes on the first enemy it hits, dealing a uh, minimum amount of damage to them and a maximum amount based on um, the target's missing health. It does like 30% or 35% of the target's missing health. And then nearby enemies take 80% of the damage. So uh, in a big group of people, hopefully the person who's low is in the front and you kill them, but hopefully everybody around also takes damage. If not, you can hopefully just deal some damage to them. So... That's what's going on with her abilities. So, we're going to max our Q. That's what I like to do. You can max your W right now if you want to. It's also good damage. Um, so, mostly focusing on your Q and your W. And then max out that E ability last. We'll talk about um, build items right now. The, some of the ones that we started with early on. Um, that first trip back, I went for a Vampire Scepter just for some sustain while I was in lane. And we also did pick up a BF Sword recently. And we also have the first part of our boots because a little bit of movement speed is helpful for getting around and uh, avoiding things. So that's what we're working with right now. So typically, that Vampiric Scepter, you know, it's just helpful while you're in lane. Make sure you can always keep your health up so you're not getting destroyed that way. And then the uh, BF Sword is very helpful because, well, it's a lot of damage. It's going to help you last hit. It's going to deal just damage when you're fighting, and it scales really well with uh, her W and with her ultimate and all of that. So that's what's going on there. We're actually going to get uh, killed by a, a little bit of something down there. But we're just trying to push still and trying to farm a little bit. And uh, that's what we're working on right now, as everybody around the map is just killing things, which is fun. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and keep talking about the build. We are going to continue building, and um, we have finished off the Bloodthirster. That's what we took, that Vampire Scepter and that BF Sword. Um, I highly recommend rushing this first. Um, it's really good for just the damage and the sustain on Jinx. Like I said, when you are maxing out that Q ability first, too, at this point, it is maxed out. And um, what it's going to do for you is with that increased attack speed as it stacks, 
you just you're just gonna have a lot of life steal and a decent amount of attack speed early on in this game without really building any. So that's what we're working on right now. We're gonna get into a little bit of a team fight here. Um, there, uh, Zyra comes in and actually initiates a really big fight. I try to get into a position after getting focused by Yi, get back to the tower, get a little distance. I'm gonna open up with the bomb, try to hit a bunch of them. I am going to pick up an assist, or actually a couple assists to Fizz, and I will kill Zyra. And then enemy Jinx is going to retreat. I need to get fairly low, but uh, picked up a kill and a couple assists, so it will help me out as I'm. Gonna go back and continue building. Gonna finish off the boots, though, right now into Berserker um, Greaves. And what we're gonna do there is give us that increased attack speed, movement speed. And then we also did pick up a long sword for a little bit of extra damage, which we will be, build, build, will be building into another item coming up shortly, which we'll get to in a second. There is Riven being super fed early, as she is right now. And uh, we're gonna worry about her later, but we'll be able to shut her down because of teamwork. Hooray, go teamwork. So... Let's go ahead and talk about some of the things I've noticed um, as playing Jinx recently. Um, well, we'll kill Riven. There's a good slow with the W. Gonna go ahead and throw Chompers down so she cannot get away. Just gonna standard attack her a couple times and pick up a kill on Riven. So um, hit him with that slow, throw the Chompers down in front of them so they can continue to not get away from you. You can also just throw Chompers down too in the middle of a team fight. It will usually lock down half the team. Um, there's some good ways you can do this. Uh, if you come in behind teams too and throw it down behind them so they can't run away, it's, it's really good. It, it's... Something they try to avoid and run around, which slows them down almost even more. So, uh, it, it's just really good utility. So, look out. She's got a lot of crowd control for an 80 carry, and that makes her pretty strong right now. So, if you utilize it very well, you will get into fights, and you'll be able to stop people like Karthus right there. We're going to get into a little bit of fight. Udra's going to come around. I am going to get rooted down, though. going to standard attack this uh, Karthus and slow him for a second. Get a little distance between me and him. And we got Uder moving in, so uh, well, he'll pick up the double kill, but I do pick up an assist on the Karthus. So um, just, you know, if you're getting chased, obviously you can throw Chompers down, or you can go ahead and just turn around, and you can hit him with Zap, which will slow him. So there's a couple different ways you can use um, her abilities to uh, get some distance between you and them. And, uh, yeah, it's very helpful. Here, actually, our team's just around this Riven in mid lane. So actually, I'm just going to turn around before going back and just help them real quick with this and pick up another quick assist. So um, just, you know... Zap has an outrageous distance to it, so you can really hit people from far away. If people try to go back underneath their tower, and they are really low, you can sneak up and just hit a Zap from outside of turret range, and you can pick up pretty easy kills with it. So, uh, it's just another thing to remember. Zap has a very, very long range, and you can really hit people from very far away with it. Um, but like I was saying, one thing I have noticed with people... Um, myself included. Uh, not so much this game because I've fixed what I've been calling the problem. The switcheroo being her Q is not being utilized um, by everyone very successfully, I don't think. A lot of people switch to um, fish bones, which is the rocket launcher, way too often for no apparent reason. Um, it just, it's great for clearing, like, big waves in front of turrets. It's great for wave clear, um, which is helpful early, which is another good reason to put points into it. But... You don't want to jump and switch into this the minute you get into a team fight because it really slows down your attack speed compared to your uh, minigun. So you don't want to use it like that. So I use it when I'm trying to switch and maybe like they're outside of my range for minigun. Then you can switch to it if you really just need to hit them with some damage because you're not within range of minigun. So that's the main times to use it. Um, as much as it does do the AoE crit, that's not bad if they're all stacked up, but it slows your attack speed down once again. So I'd only recommend doing it once or twice in a team fight, and then switching back to your minigun to start polishing off people that way. So you gotta be kinda careful, and you'll get the feeling down of what's gonna work for you when you are using either ability. So, but I, just, minigun's just a little bit better, so just be careful with switching to the rocket too often. I accidentally do it still a little bit, but getting a little bit better with it. We're gonna move in here though, a little bit of a fight. We got Vi down here, gonna pick up a kill on the Carthus real quick, and then we're gonna try to get a little distance between me and the Yi. I'll pick up an assist on him. Um, getting excited, we do flash. I was gonna try to chase after the Jinx on their team. She will flash too. I'm actually gonna use my bomb. It will kill her and deal some damage to Zyra. I'm excited again, and I got the Nami little bubbles on me, so I'm gonna just jump in here and pick up a quick double kill um, by finishing off Zyra. And I get excited after killing her, so I can run away real quick. And uh, just, it's really nice. You can chase quite easily with get excited, so. Um, just remember, if you get excited and they're, you know, got a little bit of distance between you and them, you can actually close it really quick. So, if especially if you can get a little bit of that distance covered and then hit them with another zap, which will slow them down, then you're really back in another fight. And since they're probably running from you, they're lower than you and they're dying, so you'll pick up another kill. Last time we were back at base, not this current one just a second ago, but the time before, we finished off a last whisper. 
which is really good just for damage and the armor pen. It's just going to help us with a lot of a lot of fighting, really. And I, I like to try to pick that up on her. It works out really well. And then, um, then recently what we've just done is I've just finished off a Phantom Dancer, which now is going to be great because we're going to start to get some crit chance, and that will help us out. It's going to also help us with a little bit of bonus movement speed, and that's always good, especially with Get Excited. We're just going to become super, super mobile as we die again because getting rooted is fun, and they're grouped up. But um, it's going to help you with that movement speed, the attack speed, and the crit chance. Um, so right now we are really dealing quite a lot of damage. They're going to push mid though right now. Um, and, uh, but our damage right now is really, it's actually quite good. So this works out well for us. I just launched another bomb, picked up a couple of assists actually because of it. So that'll help me out a little bit, but uh, that, this is kind of the way it goes. Um, rushing infinity edge on her. I've done it a few times. I don't actually like the result quite as much. This way seems to work just consistently better. So we're, uh, this is just kind of my recommendations. Now, comparatively to the static shiv, you can pick a shiv up if you want, but late, 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 late game, Phantom Dancer seems to just kind of scale slightly better overall. Um, costs a little bit more, but not much, but I like the, the, uh, Phantom Dancer a little bit better too, because it does give you that unique passive, which allows you to, um, ignore unit collisions. So when you do get excited, you don't even, ha don't even need to worry about lots of minions. You can just run through all that and just go kill people. So it, it's just kind of one of those items with her passive, I think paired up well together you can just ignore a lot of what's going on when you do get excited and you can just really run down teams and annihilate them we'll get to see this a little bit more later on and uh yeah it i just think phantom dancer is just a little bit better shiv has its places on a couple 80 carries but phantom dancer on jinx i think is the way to go now we were back at base not too long ago we did pick up another fan or not phantom dancer we already have one of those we don't need another one um we picked up a bf sword we are going to be building that now into our infinity edge and that is going to help us then with these increased crits and more damage and just more crit chance as well so we'll work on that next as our uh, as this build continues on now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about her masteries pretty standard stuff here the 2190 21 in the offensive tree which you know increased damage attack speed just, you know, armor pen, a little bit of all the fun stuff in there. Attack, damage per level, armor pen, blah, blah, blah. We talked about it. And then also, um, nine in the defense, but for health, a little bit of armor early too. Picked up a kill, though, on Karthus real quick. Um, there you're, uh, Zyre's gonna go into hourglass form. We're gonna run away as Yi tries to kill us, but we're gonna pick up a double kill. Now, here I go to chase her, but then I totally forgot their Jinx just respawned after I killed her a minute ago, and I was like, oh, bomb to the face. Gotta look out for those. So, yes, look out for bombs to the face. It will hurt. You will die like I just did. Um, but yeah, so a couple kills there, and uh, that's going to happen as we are dead. Uh, what are we finishing? We finished up that infinity edge at this point, so right now we have 320 damage or so, about, or something around there, and uh, that'll scale a little bit as we do get more stacks on that Phantom Dancer, or not Phantom Dancer, wow, I keep saying Phantom Dancer, on the Bloodthirster. We're actually going to kill Karthus there with the W, didn't know it was going to kill him, but it does deal decent damage, and here we're going to kill uh, Zyra, she jumps through the wall, but one of my chompers actually lands on the other side of the wall because of where it was placed, and she flashed on top of it, so we got a double kill because of that, and uh, yeah, we'll take double kills, they're fun. I like them. But back to those masteries, like I was saying, we also then put nine into the defensive tree for a little bit of extra health, a little bit of extra armor early on in the lane. Um, just really helpful early on stuff so you don't get killed in your lane, hopefully, and give away first blood. That is not fun to do, and then you also feel like a jerk for giving up first blood. But because we have finished off basically all of my damage items at this point, there's a few things you could consider to do differently. Um, we're going to talk about those too. But at this point, we're going to actually start to pick up a Guardian Angel because of the awesomeness that it gives us with the armor, the magic resist, and the ability to come back to life. I like it. It's fun. You should try it out. Um, and yeah, that's what we're doing right now. So that's what we're building towards. Now, if we go ahead and we talk about runes a little bit, and there's another kill. Um, runes, I, I, you can do some kind of pretty standard stuff. I like to go with the um, attack damage marks, go with armor seals, magic resist per level glyphs. I like those. You can also do some other ones too, just depending on what you have. But I think those ones are helpful, especially against teams like this who have a Karthus right now. And uh, just having a little bit of extra magic resist is kind of helpful because that ultimate's going to come and you never know when it will. So it's nice to resist uh, some of it because it's going to hurt. And then also for the quintessences, we go with the lifesteal ones. That's what I like. 
they work well for decent sustain in lane. So that's what I was going for. And uh, that's what we went with. Here comes Riven as we finish off this Baron. Going to kill her quick. And then we're going to work on Karthus and get rid of him. Nami will finish him off. And I'm going to chase after Jinx. She's actually going to go to the right, but I see her go that way. So we're just going to bust out the bomb and hit her with that as she tries to go to mid lane. And pick up a quick ace for the team. Now we'll be able to push a little bit. And uh, yeah, fun and games, killing people. So we're just going to keep pushing down mid. And um, I'm busting out the rockets, though, like I said, when we are getting two packs of minions. You can usually take them out pretty quick that way. But uh, didn't really need to switch to it in that fight because we just get more attack speed for staying in minigun. Um, Yi's actually back up because he died kind of before that fight. So it's going to be a little bit harder to push for now. But we'll try our best. We're just going to hold on for a second and uh, hopefully regroup since there's only two of us in base right now. But yeah, now I'm not going to finish the Guardian Angel this game because this game's going to end. But if you needed to get a different item because their team is stacking lots and lots of health, this team's really not. Uh, so don't don't have to worry about that. But if you have one of those teams that stacks lots of health, bye bye ye, you're dead. Um, then obviously you could get rid of that last whisper instead of, uh, of getting it. You could also go for the Blade of the Ruined King, if that's what you want to go toward. There's a W. We're going to actually hit Karthus with that in the background. We're going to throw Choppers down so nobody can really get over to me. It's kind of a good way to peel for yourself, Choppers. Move in and kill Zyra, and then we're going to just stand in all of this AoE crap, but we're still just going to kill everyone because we're Jinx and we don't care. And we're going to go ahead and pick up a quick triple kill. And, um, yeah. That's, uh, this is Jinx, kind of how it works. So, if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments down below. Um, everything I just talked about is also in the description. Don't forget to like this video, because that's super fun, and everyone should, because, yeah, why not? Um, but other than that, I'll just see all of you in the next build video. We're gonna get into another fight, open with volley. We're going to get Lee Sin with the ult there. just kind of wanted to hit anybody. We did. We're going to focus for Nekton because he's right in front of me. We're going to pick up a quick kill on him and Soraka. Continue flash forward so we can kite them around a little bit more. We are going to just slowly work up here and we're going to start poking them down. We're going to kill the Lee Sin for the triple and continue to chase as Hoyt runs in to tank this. MF only really needs one shot, which we will do for the Quadra. And then Lux is left and basically she's dead. So Pentakill.